recording. Thank you so much for coming aboard Film Inspiration. I appreciate it. How are you doing? Great. Thank you, Ed, for, uh, for giving me the opportunity to come on. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much, Dory. And so for everyone out there in Film Inspiration land, uh, Dory is one of, I, uh, Dory, I love to call you my top fan because every <laughs> single time I put a video out or, you know, just mostly videos and whatnot, you're always there to support. So I just want to say at the very top of this video how much I really, really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me because in, in a world where we're all online and we're all building audiences, support like yours, that's what makes, you know, somebody's, that, that's, that's what is fulfilling when you, oh. when you do something and you're just like, damn, somebody cares like this much. Yeah. So thank you so much, Dory. I appreciate it. You're um, welcome. Dory, so, so for those of us who, um, for, or I'm sorry, for those out there, and I always screw that part up, for those out there in Film Inspiration land who are not too familiar with you, can you go ahead and give us a little bit of a rundown of, you know, who you are, your history, your work, and what you're currently up to? Sure. Uh, well, my name's Dory Knutson Nichols. I live in Green Valley, which is 55 and older. Um, I used to work for the state of Arizona with Children's Protective Services, also for the state of Arizona, uh, state of Hawaii and Children's Protective Services, uh, Fort Mojave Indian Reservation. So I have a lot of past work in social services. Um, I've done movies, oh gosh, as extras since 1994. Really? Okay, I do uh, extras. I have speaking roles. I have done modeling. I do online videos, uh, mostly comedy. So I can give everybody a laugh and also it's good for my self-esteem too. Mm -hmm. um, I live with my husband. We've been married 52 years. Congrats. We have two sons. Uh, he's my best friend and my biggest supporter. So that's just kind of a little synopsis. Cool. Dory, so Child Protective Services, how, how like with, with such a robust history and a background in many, many years in that, um, how was it that acting then came into play in your case? You know, um, actually, after I retired from um, the state of Arizona and that, that's when I became more active. I, I did work at a domestic violence shelter also in uh, the state of Oregon. And so taking a lot of that on, it, it was a heavy, you know, role that I had to play yeah. in, in all these different social services. So I needed an outlet and I thought, well, what can I do? So I decided, you know, I'm going to do some acting. And this is the honest truth. When I moved here, Edgar, when you had your all we can have, you kickstarted it for me because I was an extra in that movie. Get out of here, really? Yes. Well, 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 I, knew, I knew that you were an extra in the film, but I didn't know that that was that, that was, was part the of kick your start. Beginning. That was really? the kickstart. That was the kickstart. Yes. And, I'm 69 and, years old, and I just started a couple of years ago, you know, getting full into it. Oh, Dory, I'm so honored. I'm so, I, oh, it I didn't was know wonderful. That. Here, I, <laughs> here oh. we are. Here we are. Um, here I am learning this, like, as we're live right now, and I'm I'm so honored. I had no clue. And and the first day that we met was at the park, correct? When that's we did the right. graduation scene, right? That's right. Yeah. So so yep. you just saw the ad and, and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go out to that or how did Absolutely. That Absolutely. I was an extra in the Bellman, spiked. Uh I actually turned down two, let's see, three, four roles because of the, you know, coronavirus that's going around. Yeah. I also was in the midst of of uh doing a film with a speaking role in Tubac and I stopped going there because of that. I just was cautiously optimistic, but I didn't feel safe. So I stopped doing that. So it doesn't matter to me if it's paid or not, or if it's speaking or extra, uh, you have to take care of yourself. And so I, my priorities are to take care of myself, yeah. particularly at this age. You know, you're at a vulnerable age. At the same time, I feel blessed because I've reached this age and not everybody's been able to do that. So uh, I, I do keep busy now online, and I also Zoom and Skype with friends and family uh, to keep my social life going. Uh, so I also work in, in the yard. My husband and I, we plant trees and flowers, and um, he's my best friend. 
Okay. Yeah, Dory, so what, one of the things, let's go back to the word outlet because that really caught my attention. But then I also want to ask you about all of your activity online that I've been seeing. Mm -hmm. And of course, there was that one Bernie movie that you're being. Yes, I'm still doing that, by the way. And I'm doing voiceovers and sending them to her. I'm still active in that. Okay. And so, it, so as of so, yet, so. yeah, I did more, more voiceovers on Saturday. And we're updating because everything's changing and yeah. it's more focused on the virus now. Yeah. And while it's comedy, uh, there's some very, very good messages out there. And, and the message is, you know, we are in this together. And I would say for myself, 99% of the people are supporting each other yeah. throughout this. I would so say the, the voice work that I do, while, while it's uh, self-satisfying, it's given a message too. Cool. So, so. Um... Going to the word outlet, Dory. Why? Why is it important to have that outlet? Because um, I've known I've known folks that from very early on they've known. Okay, I want to do acting or I want to make films. You know, either in front or mm -hmm. behind the camera, right? And mm -hmm. then other folks don't discover that about themselves until way later, right. and and see that as an outlet. Um, and I admire that because. You know, I've I've known and heard of, of cases where people work entire careers and their kids are grown and their kids have established their own lives. And then they get to a point in these cases of saying, okay, now it's my turn. Like, what do I want to do? Um, whereas, you know, in the other cases, you've got like, you know, your young actors and actresses and filmmakers and whatnot. But right. why, what, what was it inside of you that got you to say, you know what, like, I need an outlet this looks like it could be an outlet. And, you know, was it just a very instinctual or intuitive thing for you? Well, because I'm an artist, um, I, I consider myself an artist because I, I do a lot of photography. Um, my house is filled with it. And, and the, the artistic ability that I find within myself is connecting with other people. Mm. Um, I enjoy watching other people. I enjoy learning. Uh, to me, when I do a film, whether it's an extra speaking part or whatever, I become that character and that takes me away from the work that I used to do. This is something that I enjoy. It makes me feel good. I do things that make me feel good. And this is a feel good career for me, even though, like I said, it's the latter part of my life. Yeah. Um, I can do what I want because I, I did work my whole life and, and now it's time to enjoy it. Yeah. And, and the reason also I picked up on this is because I see so many people that are trying to make it and working so hard. And I like to encourage them. I like to encourage the young ones. I like to encourage the particularly older ones because I know that some people feel as though they're disc discriminated against. And, but, but I think you can be discriminated against uh, for anything. You know, you're too fat, you're too old, you're too young. Um, you need to look within yourself and say, what can I bring yeah. to this? How, how can I make other people happy? How can I make myself happy? So I'm doing what makes me happy. That's, that's very admirable, um, Dory, because a lot of times, a lot of people react or go after what they think other people's definitions of success are the doctor, the lawyer, yada, yada. And so we think, we have to do what other people perceive or will perceive to be as successful. And then because of all of that noise that we're all listening to, a lot of people never listen to themselves right here, or right here to honestly ask themselves, what honestly does make me happy? I, let me add to that. I had the opposite problem where I connected at the age of 14 to like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. I like video cameras and I like editing and all that stuff, right? In 1994. And I tried to get away from it. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to try medicine. Crash and burn. I suck. I suck at math. I suck at science. The arts. Great. Um, what else did I try to do? Uh, I try to be a paralegal. And after a few weeks and, you know, I, I'm like, yeah, I can't do this. Like sitting in class and the law and like, so I always kept on gravitating back to that thing that made me happy. Um, and, and the, the biggest uh, irony in my case is that like, you know, the, the blessing was, what, what I get to do for a living is extremely related to filmmaking. Although it's not film, it's news, but it's still cameras, editing, creativity, and all that. So I really admire your ability to, to connect with um, that thing inside of you that says, 
this is what makes me happy or it's this thing that that is fulfilling because um a lot of people a lot of people don't a lot of people forget about that i think or maybe they, they they've never had that connection at all i mean i don't know what's your take on happiness just to kind of go into that you know bit. i i no one is responsible for your happiness you're responsible for your own happiness yeah and some of us have that within us the ability to to seek what we need to create that happiness and because of maybe some losses or some issues that people have had in their life they're not able to i'm not judging those people for not being able to do that because i don't know their story and i don't judge anybody unless i know you know what has gone on in their life yeah but i support everyone i support you know old young uh there's a lot of mental health issues going on because of my social service background i i do foresee um the issues popping up with this isolation you know yeah. addiction triggers uh mental health issues um i want to support everybody okay i i have self-love and i have love for other people i i think my meditation that i do on a daily basis and i'm very religious about it has really created a safe and if you will quiet environment in my mind and in my soul and, and whatever works for you i i don't care if it's church meditation uh walking hiking swim, whatever you need to do to take care of yourself it will create some happiness in in you if if you do it religiously you know um if anybody ever wants to talk on a personal level mm -hmm. not that i i am not professing to be the you know the holier than thou and i know everything but i do care i do care about everybody and and if if you don't have compassion for anyone in the world and maybe you need to take a look at what's going on inside of you um you know the the empathy is, is wonderful that everybody's showing as i said before 99 percent of the people are showing a great deal of empathy i i have an older son that lives in las vegas and he works in hospitals and uh therapy and he's very high risk and yes i do worry yes i worry about that yeah you know and and we talk daily uh, and the other son's a mechanic and it's high risk i know people have to go to work and uh, bless you bless you all yeah yes uh thanks to all of our, our frontline workers especially i have a cousin in l.a and she she delivers babies mm -hmm. i know there's a term for it and i know i'm screwing up on that, but there's she delivers babies and um god bless her and all of her co-workers and everyone on on the front lines literally in the hospitals yeah. good god how do you do that but um god bless them all and uh yeah. for for what they do and for for keeping us safe and yes. as they're always telling us we got to stay home that way we can be one less person in the hospital for them to that's care right for. but um so yeah i'm happy happy to hear that happiness is top priority and and that it's a it's a guiding it's a north star for you dorian yes. and, and and in all honesty it it really it really started to become more and more apparent that it's a north star to me of like okay um like anytime i have any options on the table like do i do this do i do this do i do this or and then i always stop myself like wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute the question has to revert back to at least in my case is this going to make me happy not how much money am i going to get from this or how you know right. money's important we all need money but the thing is that more important than that is am i going to be happy doing this or am i going to right. be happy doing this and so um i mean great great points with regards to to happiness and and i'm happy that you're very conscious of that dory let's talk let's talk on on another topic with regards to your demographic okay like you mm -hmm. said you you stepped into this later in life as i told you also i've known a few other people that have stepped into this later in life after you know decades of of a career and mm -hmm. you know they're seeing their kids grow up out of the nest they started their own families but it's not it's not like your demographic has nothing to put on the table here's what i mean by that there was a movie ah, i think richard gear of all people the marigold mm -hmm. hotel or something or other mm -hmm. and it's basically a movie about a, a bunch of retirees in india 
and um, the, the Marigold Hotel. I know I'm screwing that title up. Richard Gere, if you're watching this, I apologize. <laughs> um, but everyone, like, it, that movie is obviously geared toward people of your age or older. And mm -hmm. so that means that there's a market there. That means that there's content that's being made to be catered to. And Jesus, Richard Gere also, I mean, you yes. know, sex symbol out of the 80s and the 90s and the yes. early 2000s too. Um, you know, from all the girlfriends that I had throughout the years, uh, you know, like pretty woman. And so, I mean, there's still a lot, and especially with good, good God, Dory, especially with your demographic, there's still a mm -hmm. lot of stories to be told from, from your demographic, except traditionally we've been told, okay, well, you're on the, you're, you know, you're, you're at your point in your life and, and that's it. And now it's time to retire, mm -hmm. but here you are proving that no, there's still a lot of value to be, you know, from you, from you personally for you to put on the table. Right. That's I, right. I, and I have that problem where I like, I, I run my mouth and then I need to it, cut myself off. It's okay. <laughs> I've always, even as a child, thought outside the box. I was the rebel. I was the one that didn't follow the norm. I wanted to do something different. I always remember, bless her soul, she died a year and a half ago. My sister said to me, well, what are you going to do next? Ride an elephant? And I said, hey, I said, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, so I, I like to do fun things. Yeah. And I like to meet new people. I've met some wonderful people here. I've met wonderful people through the acting. I really have. Um, I see a lot of support there and I see uh, some idiots, but you get that 1% no matter where you're at. Yep. Okay. Don't take that to heart. Move on. Okay. Yep. Uh, what I can bring to the table is my knowledge of, of my life and my past. I don't feel as though I have any limitations at my age. I feel like I'm blooming. And as I said, I feel blessed because I've made it. A lot of people can't say that they've made it to this age. Yeah. That and so many other experiences, Dory, because um, so much of, at least on my side of the camera, in the writing and, you know, especially with, you know, the upcoming feature, all we have, mm -hmm. and as with many of the things that I've done, a lot of what we do, either you with the acting, me with the writing, the directing, shooting, yada, 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 a lot of that comes from things that we have experienced. And with regards to experiences, you have everyone beat. You have, you have knowledge and experiences that other people still have yet to, to experience. And that is so valuable to bring to the table in the creation process. Does that make sense? Yes, and I, and I thank you kindly for that comment. Um, I, I think that the younger actors and actresses will learn, and, and I do believe that does come with age. Um, and that's not to say that they're less than, okay? They just haven't experienced what a person of my age or older have. Even if I meant someone that's a year older than me, mm -hmm. They have more experience than I do, and I acknowledge that. The flip side of that is I have learned a lot from younger actors, too. Ah, oh, okay. I really have. You know, uh, I, I watch them, and uh, I admire their tenacity. Um, I admire them for putting themselves out there. So I do think it's a two-way street. My knowledge is uh, differ from theirs. Yeah. but they will reach a time in their life where they'll, they'll be able to share. You know, um, I hate that old saying, remember when, but remember when, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm.